Many people selling their home wonder if staging is really worth it. After all, it's expensive, and if you invest in it, you wanna make sure that you get a return on that investment. So today we're gonna to be talking about some of the research done on staging and whether or not it's the right option for you. So first off, let's dig into the numbers because I love numbers. So the first thing is looking at just the cost. What does staging cost? The cost of staging typically depends on the size of the home, but you can expect to spend anywhere from about $2,000 to $2,500. Now there's no way of getting around that that's a lot of money. So let's look a little deeper to see if it's actually worth it before making a gut reaction of just saying, nope, it's too expensive. According to a recent study done by NER, which is the National Association of Realtors, 23% of buyer agents said that staging a home increased the price by 1-5%, to and another 26% said that staging a home increased the price, the final sale price, by 6% or more. So that's about half of the respondents saying that staging a home got at least 1%, some saying as many as 10-20% more just from staging a home, which in my mind is a little bit ridiculous but that's what the data says. So how much money is this? For a home selling at $500,000, if it sells for 1% more, that's $505,000. So if you spent $2,500 on staging and got an extra $5,000, that's a 200% return on your investment. Okay, but what about the other half that didn't say that the price increased by at least 1%? Well, about 25% of the respondents said they had no idea whether staging was worth it or not. And there's a reason for this, I think, because many people don't actually stage homes. Uh, over 50% of realtors don't stage homes at all. And uh, many other realtors uh, haven't seen enough staged homes to know whether or not it made a difference. So it makes sense why 25% of all the respondents wouldn't have an answer. So 50% said at least 1%, 25% said they had no idea, and another 25% said there was no impact that staging had on the sale price of a home. So what that means is there's a two to one ratio. So for every uh, two people saying that the sale price increases by 1%, there's one person saying that, mm, no, it actually doesn't. Anyway, what this means is that you've got essentially a two to one chance of getting at least a 200% return on your investment, which, you know, if you're a gambler, those are really good odds. If you're an investor, well, it just depends on your risk tolerance uh, for your risk versus that reward ratio. But let's dig a little deeper. What is the purpose of staging anyway? Why would someone bother staging their home at all? I mean, it's not like you're gonna keep the staging furniture. It's not like anything about the house is even changing. So why would it make a difference at all what someone's gonna spend on a home if it's staged? Well, there's a funny principle about buyers, and really that's all of us. As much as we like to think that we are very logical and we buy things based on reason and common sense, the reality is that down from what kind of toothbrush you buy to buying a home that you buy based on emotion and then you justify with rationality or logic. And there's a psychological principle called aspirational identity that plays into all of this. You see this all the time on advertisements. Say you've got that car commercial where who do they have driving the car? Is it some random average looking guy? No, it's some supermodel driving a car and his hair is perfect and his, you can practically smell the clone coming off of him. But the thing is, they sell this product and they say, if you buy this product, then you'll be like this. And this is all across the board. It's the reason why you see beer commercials show someone who is attractive and fit, running on a beach and partying, rather than someone who's 30 pounds overweight, passed out in the bathtub. Anyway, staging does the exact same thing. When someone walks into a home and they see the kitchen perfectly staged and they see a living room with books perfectly organized, they can say, wow, this is the type of lifestyle that I wanna have. They see themselves living the life that they would dream of. Chances are their home is gonna look nothing like that, but if they can imagine it, then it makes it more real for them. The thing is, people's imaginations really aren't that good. When they see just a blank canvas, there's nothing there, then their logical part of the brain is working. They're looking at all the stats and trying to think of dollar per square foot and all that kind of stuff. But when they can see themselves in the home, it operates the parts of the brain that uses hope and um, positive feelings. And so they're going to want the home uh, much more and they may not even fully understand why. The thing is people don't buy homes because the home's gonna make them happy. Buying a home won't make you happy, which is kind of an interesting thought all in itself. 
but it's the memories you make inside of a home, the life you live there. So when someone can see themselves living that life, uh, then they're gonna be much more likely to uh, pay a premium in order to have it. The home itself and the nuts and bolts and the drywall and the baseboard, all that kind of stuff um, is not what people are actually buying when they buy a home. And like I mentioned, when a home is vacant, when there's nothing there, they're not able to see themselves in this new life, which is actually a really interesting point in what, when I would make the key distinction. I also think that's why there's a, such a discrepancy in the data. The thing is, if a home has already got stuff in it, if someone's occupying it, they got all their furniture, usually there's a way to organize that and um, position it in a way where it's gonna show well and it's gonna be, um, it's gonna allow a buyer to see themselves there. When a home is vacant, that's when I typically say someone should stage with home. So to answer the question, is it worth it, is it not? Well, I think if your home is vacant, if all your stuff's out, then I think, yes, it is worth it. If you still have all of your stuff, all of your furniture in your home, do you really need to haul everything out and bring in all this new stuff? I don't necessarily think so. I think you can lay it out in such a way, and this is why it's good to have a professional come in and um, have some an outside set of eyes come and look at your space and see how it can best be presented to a buyer. This is another principle of why you want to declutter and depersonalize your home is so that when someone comes into your home, they're not seeing all your family pictures because it feels like, oh, I'm intruding on someone's space rather than being able to imagine themselves living there. I have another video about this on how to get your home ready to sell, which covers some of that, but we're not gonna go into it all right here. So just to recap, here's the main points. Most people who do this for a living, buyer real estate agents and listing real estate agents are pretty much in agreement that if you stage your home, it's gonna sell for more money. Uh, there's some other data that suggests that it's going to uh, also be on the market for less time. And I think that kind of goes without saying, maybe not, but you can check out the report below that has all of this information. Well, I hope you found this information helpful. Again, check out that report because if you're like me and you like data, you can dig through all these answers yourself. There's also some pretty interesting other information in there that I think you might enjoy. And if you're thinking of selling your home and live in the Newburgh area or somewhere in the surrounding area, please reach out to me and I'd love to help you with that. Well, thanks for watching the video and I will catch you in the next one.